students now we will read about again about the economy agriculture trade and urbanization first of all agriculture was the main occupation because maximum revenue which they used to collect that was collected from the agriculture and agriculture was also a main activity of that central islamic land and land was owned by small as well as the big peasants and both were doing the agriculture and the state used to levy the taxes from these agricultural fields and these agricultural products and tax collection by the state used to be a main source of the revenue for the government and land gave, uh, was also given to those people who used to from the arabia and from the family of the caliph especially that land which was left by the people after the invasion of the islamic people on that area suppose if a if an army of islamic people used to invade a particular area the people used to fled away from that area so the land which was left by them that was distributed among the nobles especially the uh, family of the caliph so the family of the caliph and his descendants became quite affluent uh, by these agricultural lands and they were having a big estate from where they used to get the revenue agricultural land was controlled by the government also land tax was of two types and that was the major source of income first of all kharaj kharaj used to be the one fifth of the total production and it could reach up to the one by two yani ki that half of the product can be taken as the revenue from the people as an agricultural tax so that was a major source of income but the kharaj was the tax that was mainly uh, imposed upon the non muslim people so that was also a way to pressurize the people to convert to islam and whenever they used to be converted to islam they had to pay only one tenth of the total production of the agriculture means the tax used to be reduced and that was called the usr so usr was for muslim and kharaj was for non muslim and kharaj tax system was a very oppressive tax system of that time and then people started converting to the islam why people converted to islam so that they can get the tax exemption as a result people slowly and gradually started converting to the islam and when a large number of people or maximum people of that area converted to islam that also reduced the income of the state as a result now state had to find some alternate way through which they can generate the income and later on by the abbasid caliph everybody was uh, supposed to give the equal share of the taxes means the uniform tax was implemented upon the muslim as well as the non muslim so that they can also disgrace the conversion to islam if everybody would be converted to islam then the income of the state would be decreased so fearing about that situation they disgraced the conversion but still the people were converting so they implemented a uniform policy of the tax collection from each and everybody who used to live in that central islamic land students now we will learn about something more about the economy agriculture and the trade so first of all officials paid from agricultural revenue that was called the ikta system so this was a system which was coined at this time according to this system the land was distributed to the nobles and they used to get their salary from that land by collecting the taxes so tax was the main source of their income and the officials were paid by the agricultural taxes mainly the crops cotton orange banana spinach sugar watermelon these used to be grown in that area in the central islamic land and from there it used to be supplied to the europe as well and some other countries so they used to export the agricultural products also and mainly they exported to the europe then they started construction of the canals dams and digging up of wells and that encouraged by the government and anybody who so ever used to invest their money in the development of the infrastructure of the irrigation they were also given the tax concession as a result agriculture started developing in islamic world and you can see that these kind of crops used to be grown over there and which were also exported so agriculture was also one of the uh, main source of income for the uh, central islamic land we will read about the economy of the empire that is agriculture trade and urbanization so 
today we will discuss about these topics and first of all we will discuss about the development of trade as you know that the central islamic land was having a central location between the east asia and southeast asia and europe and there used to be a lot of trade between the asian countries and european countries so all the trade routes used to pass through the and uh, this region as a result there was a lot of development of trade in this area and mainly the trading commodities were spices cotton textile gunpowder from india so the trade was taking place from india to european countries and that was passing through the red sea zone that was the area which is close to the saudi arabia and another is through the arabian sea there used to be the and the gulf of kuwait and from there on it used to move to the european country so there was a lot of trade between the indian subcontinent and europe and the trade route was passing through the arabian peninsula or the central islamic land as a result they used to take a lot of charges from the traders and they used to earn a lot of benefit from this trade so there was a lot of development of trade in that area and the trade was also taking place from china that was passing through the silk route which was passing from china to central asia then it used to go to the uh, regions of iran iraq and then up to the mediterranean sea so these were the two route one was the land route and another was the sea route and these two routes were passing through the area which was controlled by the islamic empire as a result there was a lot of development of trade then there used to be coinage of gold and silver and copper if there was a trade so there was a need of exchange of currency so mainly the coins were minted and these were minted in gold silver and copper and they also used the sak sak was a new form of exchange which was developed in the islamic land and it was a uh, letter of the credit and today it is used in another form that is called check so the word check come from the sak which was uh, coined by the people of the central islamic land and it was used for a long distance trade and a well network of banking was developed at that time so that the trade can be facilitated sea trade monopoly for 5 centuries with china india and europe so there was monopoly of the sea trade route by the arabian people and that was taking place to the east asian countries like sri lanka india and indonesia malaysia and china and mainly the traders were arabian and iranian traders so in india the islam came first not in north india rather it came first in the south india because islamic traders used to come in the south india especially at the coast of malabar because malabar was the coast which was well known for the uh, growing up of the spices so spices was sent from malabar coast to the arabian desert and from there it used to supply it to be supplied to the rest of the europe cotton textile was also very fine which was manufactured in india so these were the commodities which used to be traded from india to the islamic world and you can see that there are specimens of the coins and we have discussed about them earlier also because and there were two kinds of coins which were minted at that time and these were the dinar and dirham now what kind of the society used to be there in the islamic world that we will discuss here first of all the muslim ruling class used to be there who used to control the administration and they were mainly the follower of uh, prophet muhammad since beginning and there were some people who were converted to islam later on and they were converted forcefully or some of them willingly converted themselves into the new religion that was islam so that was also a part of the community then non muslims there were a very less number of islamic people in the beginning like up to the abbasid revolution there used to be 10% of the muslim population and rest of the population used to be non muslim so they were also living in that area and the slaves which were generally purchased from the central asia because there used to be a central asian market for the slaves from where the slaves used to be purchased so they were also an important part of the islamic community so these were the four kinds of people which used to be there in islamic society
now we will read about the learning and the culture so what kind of learning used to be there what was the culture of central islamic land that we will discuss here first of all the first place used to be given to the ulemas like we have read about the uh, society of europe that there used to be some people uh, who used to be uh, part of the society and the highest rank was given to the priest the same way in islamic society also the highest rank was given to the ulemas and they were the religious leaders and they used to interpret the rules of quran which was strictly followed by the islamic people at that time and these were the rules about the code of conduct of a person so that was ensured by the ulemas then islamic rule that was the sharia that was also a code of conduct and these used to be followed by the people who used to convert to islam and there used to be uh, sharia one is sharia and another was the siyasa sharia siyasa sharia that used to control the affair of the uh, politics that was called the siyasa sharia so these were the rules which were laid down by the uh, islam and they were uh, followed by the people and the uh, whether the code of conduct is properly followed or not that was ensured by the ulemas the sharia used to provide the guidance regarding on all the possible legal issues within the sunni society the society which used to follow the prophet muhammad that was called the sunni society because another name of prophet muhammad was the sunna and the qazi who used to perform the function of a judge who, which was appointed by the state in each city and he used to ensure the justice according to the rule of sharia differences in the interpretation of laws in the state in 8th and 9th century so this was a change which took place that there used to be difference in the laws which were followed by the people at that time in 8th and 19th century since 8th century the laws used to be uniform but later on various branches of these laws have been uh, bifurcated and these were called the madhhabs which were the branches of islam and these are called maliki hanafi safi and hanbali the last two hanbali the last one hanbali was very very rigid in that laws and it used to be very very orthodox as well so these are different uh, branches of islam which used to follow a different kind of laws so it was based on the jurisist laws that there were four branches of islam and some used to follow the liberal laws whereas some used to follow the very 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 strict laws like the hanbali was a branch which used to follow a very very strict laws now quran which is considered a holy book of islam and it is written in which language arabic language and it is divided in 114 chapter you should remember that how many chapters used to be there 114 chapters and these are known as the surahs and arranged from big to small so they are uh, arranged in the manner that and uh, the first there used to be the biggest chapter and there used to be smallest chapter in the end and first chapter is a short prayer that is called al faith or opening according to muslim tradition the quran is a collection of the messages which god sent to the people or uh, through the prophet muhammad so these were the uh, these were the messages which were sent from the god to the people through the uh, messenger of god that was called prophet muhammad so generally in the quran these messages have been written the task of the compiling of these revelations or messages was completed sometimes about 650 it means it was compiled after the death of prophet muhammad in 650 now the higher education center was the nizamia that was in baghdad and it was established in 1065 so for higher education the people used to go to baghdad the madrasa this is a kind of school or college was a college of learning for the students who had finished their schooling in maktab maktab used to be a small school and madrasa used to be the larger one madrasa were 
attracted attached to the mosque so madrasas were generally attached with the mosque and a religious kind of teaching used to be given in these madrasas educational institutions that uh, were established in alexandria that is in egypt which lies very close to the mediterranean sea's coast and syria that is in the eastern uh, western side of the empire and mesopotamia so these were the areas where these educational institutions were set up and they used to give the education regarding the islamic religion and sharia greek philosophy maths astronomy medicine these were also studied in these madrasas and a lot of translation work was also done by the people of the islamic empire and these were the translation of books in arabic language they were written in the greek language during the greek empire and later on these books were translated into the arabic language by these people so that was a kind of contribution which was given by the arabian people to the world and these translation used to be very very helpful later on in the later centuries in the universities of europe also